It's been a minute since Coolzuck announced Meta's new Llama 3 large language model, which quickly became the go-to option for anyone who was into open source large language models and wanted to fine tune them and make them better. One of the interesting attributes of Llama 3 is just how many tokens it was trained on and the fact that it's not a mixture of experts model. And in some previous videos, we've explained why this has resulted in some challenges with fine tuning it and getting anything more than kind of more specific or nuanced output and not necessarily the huge performance gains we saw with a lot of advanced and even early fine tunes of Mistral 7b and Mistral 8 by 7b. So obviously Eric Hartford has done a ton of work with multiple iterations of Dolphin already directly focused on Llama 3 and it's been improving with each iteration. But what a lot of people who watch this channel were mentioning in the comments and what I found curious and there are very good reasons for this is the performance increases were only you know a handful of points above of baseline and were in very specific areas. And in a lot of cases, when we saw wins in fine tuning Llama 3 in certain areas, we'd see mild degradation in others or other areas that, that just wouldn't improve at all. And up until very recently, we didn't know if these models were really going to have kind of a breakthrough in terms of fine tuning that would really make them substantially better. And fortunately, this week we had a bit of a break. So this break comes in the form of Open Chat Llama 3 Instruct 8B. And what's really cool with this is it's first off it's coming from open chat so they have a history of very solid performing fine tunes and just like Eric Hartford they're known for having very very good work and the other interesting thing that I'm going to get into in just a bit is the fact that OpenChat prioritizes deterministic performance. So basically, they aim to fine-tune and benchmark in ways that gives um, very repeatable performance that is as consistent as possible. So efficiency and usability and how you interact, obviously, you're getting wins there. But with a focus on deterministic performance, generally, it means that the average person, regardless of any specific task, will get something out of these models. So in a rough way, it's sort of like having more consistent, improved, generalized performance, not just with one kind of task or language, etc. So I want to get into this. I want to dig into why this model is so good, specifically OpenChat 3.68b in comparison to Llama 3.8b and some other kind of uh, quants of that. Yeah, so welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So how did OpenChat do this and what are kind of the high level accomplishments of OpenChat here? Basically what OpenChat is saying in this announcement is that they've surpassed the official Llama 3 Instruct model with a set of 1.2 million pieces of synthetic data compared to um, around 10 million human labels. It's a really interesting application of synthetic data to improve these models, not just kind of uh, reselecting and reshuffling existing data sets, which still works pretty well, but with Llama 3 to get a little bit more performance eked out, it's taking some different approaches. And basically their focus with this model was as follows. So they claim here that GPTs are close to their limits, especially at scales like Llama 3 uses, and they excel at generation but fall short at complex tasks or kind of multi-step tasks, where for instance, to even understand what the task is, you need multiple prompts to understand and then produce an output. And that kind of multi-step reasoning for a while has been challenging for these tools, but it's interesting that this is where kind of OpenChat started. As always, they say training next-gen models capable of deterministic reasoning and planning, maintaining a large context window, but understanding what the context across multiples of those prompts might be, specific to the contexts of the prompts themselves, which seems relatively simple, but when you're trying to teach a GPT how to do that, it can be kind of complex. What's cool is this is already on Hugging Face for anyone who's watching this to mess around with. There's actually a live demo on their website, and they've also released a lot of their training data on GitHub. And the benchmarks do not lie. So what's interesting is it is falling a little bit short in MMLU. And generally MMLU is where a lot of these existing Llama 3 fine tunes are compared. So generally speaking, you would see, you know, a two to three point delta in MMLU and consider that pretty good. But what's interesting here is the biggest gains are specifically in human eval and kind of just the rough average of some other uh, math benchmarks. So you can see here that, again, there's certain areas where similar to some other fine tunes we've seen, the delta is really just a few points. For instance, in GSM8K, there is only about a two point delta. In this four shots math benchmark, there's only a half a point ahead. And it's hard to say that that's really even outside of the error bound. But what's cool is with human eval, assuming this wasn't trained directly against it, 
there is nearly a 10 point spread, which is really cool. It's something we haven't seen before. Now, now to say that we know why this happened is not entirely accurate. There's some theories and hopefully we're going to continue to see more advancements after this that continue to improve this kind of average performance number generally. But it is cool to see this comparing against Gemma 7B, Llama 38B with uh, a lot of RLHF and then Llama 38B Instruct, which previously was considered to be kind of the best model of this size. So what does OpenChat actually have to say about this? So they say, we developed a new continuous pre-training method, meta alignment for LLMs, which achieves similar results to extensive RLHF training that Meta did with Llama 3 Instruct, and Meta was really open about this. This process is both data and compute efficient using primarily synthetic data and less than 10% of the original data set. And with California's new regulation basically saying you can't use too many GPU hours to train a given model, it's going to be really funny that pre-training is probably going to completely wreck that entire bill. Um, I don't think the context and the basis of that bill is based in reality, and uh, it's going to be really funny to see researchers completely shred the rhetoric of that really dumb law. The funniest part of it is the only way they're going to understand who has the potential to do that is basically by registering GPUs, and they've been doing that with other things in California, and you can guess how well that's been going as well. But anyway, the other thing that OpenChat is really into here is they say that we pushed Llama 3.8b to a new level of performance while retaining the flexibility for further SFT tuning. So developers can better tailor our model for each unique use case. And this is another thing we talked about in our other video mentioning why Llama 3.8b is so hard to fine tune. What's interesting is when you have a lot of kind of context space to work with and you've built the model with so many tokens going in, Sometimes when you fine tune, you find that there are really big trade-offs when you're adding certain abilities and there isn't a lot of kind of spare thinking space or a space for the model to actually consider what's going on in active inference. And of course, I'm taking a lot of liberties kind of wording this simply. Obviously under the hood, the actual linear algebra going on is much more complex. But basically what's cool with this is with SFT, it means that the tune version of this can actually still be worked on and it's not kind of what you end up with with a lot of really small quants or models like Phi 3, where if you try to do things with them, you either get like little bits of performance or lots of performance in one certain area and then very quickly run into something that you can't really even merge with because it's just really kind of an unwieldy thing to use. And what's interesting coming from OpenChat is they mentioned that they noticed sort of some upper bounds of what they could do. And this begs the question of how much more performance we can actually expect to eke out of Llama 3. They say, however, while training these new models, I can't help but realize the upper limit of what autoregressive models can do. They struggle to solve complex tasks such as software engineering, advanced mathematics, and creating super assistance. And they say, you know, it's mathematically challenging for GPT models to efficiently and effectively decompose and plan for the multi-step deterministic actions necessary for AGI. So I would say we're probably not that close to AGI and that frankly, GPT-5 is probably still a ways off. But again, determinism is their focus. And when you approach determinism directly with these models, it gives you a much clearer picture of what kind of the real upper limit of their capability is and where they start to break. Because, you know, some would say determinism is just consistency, but in measuring determinism, you're, you're measuring more so against the point of failure than the best point of, of performance. So it's kind of like cherry picking in reverse, but in certain cases, if done right, you can actually get better performance or a better idea of real performance, not just kind of cherry pick performance in a few niche areas where it was best. So it, it's basically a better average that also generally lends itself to indicating consistency. What's also cool is this has been shipped with a really easy to deploy chat interface. So compared to other base models that we've used before, this should be pretty straightforward. And also tensor parallelism is enabled or at least um, capable out of the box, which is pretty cool. And if you've worked with these, you'll kind of understand why. And yeah, so this is really cool to see. And I'm gonna look at the Hugging Face page and then we'll, ho we'll hop into an inference endpoint and see what we can figure out. So I'm going to be using a GDUF uh, version of this model. What's pretty cool here is there are a bunch of different versions available, a bunch of different quants available. So whether or not you have a massive GPU or a pretty reasonably sized GPU, you should be able to fit this. Um, it's 
you know, obviously since it's on Hugging Face, you can pull it down with Hugging Face CLI, which is pretty cool. What I do like is Bartowski here has given a really solid write-up as to which you should pick based on your GPU. Basically saying, yeah, if you want the model running as fast as possible, you want to fit the whole thing in your GPU's VRAM, and otherwise you can kind of share your GPU RAM and your system RAM, which is pretty cool. And if you like Bartowski's work, definitely check out this page to see where you can throw them a few coins. So let's hop into the inference endpoint. All right, so I'm using the open chat inference endpoint. I had a little bit of an issue with hugging face, but this is wildly fast even without grok and it's pretty cool. So I'm using a relatively standard system prompt. Typically I'm keeping in mind to use their kind of chat template, which basically just says that you really should use this end of turn termination clause with every message you send. So let's try it out. So first I'm gonna try just talking to it and we'll see what we can get. And then we'll move on to some more complex tasks. So I'm going to say here, I'm going kayaking later this week. What should I bring to make sure I have? So kind of a long question, but the system prompt I have here just tells it to be specific and answer in kind of clauses, not just a list of bullets. So let's see what we get. So it's giving us kind of a nice list here. So clearly it's an instruct model. What's good is it still ends with kind of a clause here. So it doesn't just give me a, a rambling list of everything that I would need. And one, it's quick. And two, this is actually pretty specific. So it's thinking about me, the subject who's a human and the kayak, which is kind of the thing that I'm using and what I would need relative to that. So obviously a kayak and a paddle, something to keep me safe, things to keep me out of the sun and just some relative things I would need to get around. So that's pretty cool. So I wanna see how much context this actually keeps, but let me say here, uh, I'd like to write a Python function that will help me, basically I'm, I'm giving kind of a basic geometry question to find the flattest end of, the flattest set of points um, in this kind of point cloud. So I'm just looking for some basic reasoning here. Okay, so not bad. So it's basically looking at the minimum and maximum slope and then picking the series of points that gets us there. So now I'm going to kind of critique this and let's see, so let's say, uh, so GIS is what I take from an actual map and let's actually see. All right, so actually I've used Shapely before, that's pretty cool. And now it's giving us a much more complex function that can handle way more points and give us a much better idea. So this is pretty cool. And it's saying this code defines fine flattest edge, which takes a list of 100 points. So it's still a little bit too specific. So it thinks I actually just meant 100, which is fine. And it draws a polygon, then finds the fattest, then finds the flattest edge by iterating through the vertices, self intersecting. Okay, so that's actually a really good point that I actually hadn't thought of. So this is pretty cool. What I do like about this is it's quite it's pretty fast and frankly, I'm liking this interface much more than the hugging face inference endpoint. It's also cool is I haven't reset this and it, it's not getting too caught up. Obviously this programming question is still roughly relevant to kayaking, but it's still pretty interesting. So let me try some multi-step stuff, which normally works well with GPT-4 or well enough, but uh, let's try it again. And just to be clear, I'm going to make sure, Curiously, it was, it was working without this end of turn bit, but let me try actually doing that. So let's see if it waits for the prompt or not. Great, so that worked, which actually in Llama 3 sometimes was a little bit difficult. I'm going to say, I'm a frog. Okay, good, now it's still waiting. Uh, I need to find the, so kind of a, it's still relevant to the lake. It's saying we need to look at a lake and understand where the deepest parts are. Basically what I'm asking it to figure out is if I'm looking at the lake, what colors should I look for in terms of other relative shades to understand which part of the lake is darkest? To understand which part of the lake is clarity, temperature, how much plant life there is. So by temperature, what's interesting is in theory, you know, I could see that with depth and it says generally decreases with depth. So this is actually pretty cool. So I'm, I'm gonna ask one more follow-up, which is it's not the most reliable. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, that's a fair point. But what's cool is this is cl very clearly reasoning and it's very grounded. And the system prompt I used was really pretty straightforward. So this is actually really, really cool. I'm going to link this free endpoint for inference in the description below. And I'm really excited with the performance of this. You know, the other models, they've been a little hard to use. And frankly, I think a lot of this is open chat just over the last few months and just as they release new models, they've thought really deeply about their kind of chat model. I frankly like it a little bit more than the hugging face um, standard of this, which is kind of interesting, but this has been very easy to use. There've been very few hiccups here. 
and uh, I might actually keep using this front end going forward. So I'm curious if you guys have tried this model out yet, if you think this is actually going to be better than whatever version of Llama 3 you're using. If you don't like Llama 3 and you're using a different uh, state-of-the-art open LLM, please let me know in the comments what that is. Or if there are other benchmarks you want me to try out in these videos going forward, please let me know. I am compiling kind of an official set of these that I'll use every time. So I'm really curious to hear your input. And yeah, so as always, I hope you learned something. If you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.